Morning, HPC. Hope you're um, feeling okay this morning. Are you ready for another ramble uh, from this book, uh, To Seek and Save by Sinclair Ferguson? Still enjoying it. This is my ramble on Luke chapter 20, the first eight verses of Luke chapter 20, which was yesterday's reading. Um, and uh, it's a showdown, isn't it? Showdown, not at the OK Corral, but showdown in the temple. In the red corner, you've got Jesus, the Son of God, uh, God's anointed prophet, priest and king, the one who God's people should have been waiting for. In the blue corner, you've got the religious leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, uh, the high priests, the people with the power, the connections, the money and the look. They mean business. And they come to Jesus, who is teaching and preaching the gospel in the temple. And they say to him, who do you think you are? They say to him, how dare you do this? Well, that's the undertone. Actually, what they say is, uh, what do you think you're doing? Uh, and by whose authority do you do it? And rather than la launch into a long explanation and defence, he asks them a question. I love how Ferguson puts it. He says, Jesus doesn't seek to answer the question. He seeks to answer the questioner. Sometimes there's a big difference, isn't there? And he asked them a question. He says, um, uh, basically, who do you think John the Baptist was? Uh, and, uh, and that both reveals their hearts and puts them in such a difficult situation that they are unable to answer it. It leaves them speechless. And I think it's a really helpful thing in our conversations with people to ask questions, particularly to answer a question, sometimes with a question. Now, sometimes if you do it too much, it can be frankly very annoying, but often it's really helpful. Here are two questions which come from uh, this book uh, by an, a guy named Greg Kukul. It's called Tactics. And um, he says here are two really good questions which help us to answer people's questions. Uh, uh, so answering people's questions with a question. Uh, here's the first one. The first one is, what do you mean by that? Now that helps us gather facts, both about the question and the questioner. And it enables me to answer any question someone's asking in a sensitive and much more targeted way, the more that I know about people. So it's really an exercise in listening. What do you mean about that? Not something I'm always brilliant at, but something I'd like to be better at. So if someone says, of course, God can't exist because of all the suffering in the world, asking the question, what do you mean about that, instantly helps me to find out, is the person who I'm speaking to, the person who's asking me the question, are they in the middle of severe suffering? Or are they actually someone who just wants to play an interesting philosophical game? Someone who's saying, well, if you claim God is all powerful, if you claim God is all good, then that can't possibly be true because suffering exists in the world. Now, there are answers to both of those people, both of those types of people. They're different answers. And by asking the question, what do you mean about that? I get to find out which, which answer I should be giving to that question. And here's the second question, which is also really helpful, I think. And that is, how did you come to that conclusion. Asking the questioner to defend their reasoning and their thinking helps me to give a good clear answer, but it may also expose the hearts of the person who's asking the question. So if someone says to me, why does God hate gay people? Well, the short answer is he doesn't. But to enable me to answer that question better, saying, how did you come to that conclusion? or perhaps why do you think that, will reveal things for me, won't it? It will reveal to me that maybe the person has received hatred from people who claim to be Christians because of their sexuality. It will reveal to me that maybe this person um, has been reading widely on the subject, and this is the conclusion they've come to. Or perhaps, and I must say, has been more my experience, it reveals that uh, people are just parroting a lazy phrase that they've heard other people say. And by me asking them, how did you come to that conclusion? The answer is they haven't really come to that conclusion. They're just repeating what they heard someone else say in the pub or in the, in the shop or, or on the media, and they've assumed it must be true. So by me sort of throwing the ball back to them, I'm saying, well, come on, 
uh, you see whether your reasoning, your conclusions stand up in the way that I believe uh, that Jesus stands up to all questioning. He certainly does in Luke chapter 20, and he consistently does across the scriptures as well. One of the brilliant things about asking a question when you're asked a question is it gives you a chance to pause, to breathe, to think and to pray, Lord, please help me to answer both the question and the questioner really well. God promises to help us when we pray like that. So it's a, a good thing by asking, answering a question with a question just to take stock and to make sure that we're really answering the question that's being asked, not what we think the question is that's being asked. So uh, what do you mean by that? And how did you come to that conclusion? Our faithful friends to Christians to be able to call upon when we find ourselves being asked a question. Or to put it another way, as Sinclair Ferguson said, sometimes it's really helpful to think, what would Jesus do? Have a really good day. Bye bye.